In this video, I'm going to test some possible containment measures for aerosols generated during intubation and extubation. To do this, I've made a crude cough simulator with a paint gun and some polycarbonate. I'm going to use this to spray cold power, which is being diluted in water. And I'm using this because it fluoresces with my 365 nanometer UV torch. For reasons which will soon become obvious, I'll be wearing a full face respirator during this test. This is a simulated cough during laryngoscopy. After the cough, we checked for contamination. The paint gun was adjusted to produce a two meter horizontal aerosol cloud. My face shield was wiped and checked for contamination and I used a fresh gown and gloves for each test. We ran the tests twice with a half second burst to approximate coughing and a three second burst to determine a worst case scenario. Contamination was the same in both burst durations so except when noted I'm only using the results of this three second burst. In an unprotected laryngoscopy there was contamination of my hands, torso and shoulders and gross contamination of my face shield, head and lower part of my respirator. This is a technique where the endotracheal tube is removed whilst the face is covered by an anaesthetic mask. There was mild contamination of my hands and right forearm, a few drops on my torso and nothing on my face. When I simulated a cough into the mask firmly applied to the face, the only contamination we could find was a small streak on my face shield. The leak on an actual patient obviously may be larger than on the polycarbonate dubby. A cough during intubation in an aerosol tent resulted in mild contamination of my hands, forearm and lower torso. Here, we're testing extubation with hands completely outside the aerosol tent. We were unable to detect contamination, although we didn't perform a three second burst for this test. Simulated intubation in a perspex box resulted in mild contamination of hands and forearms. There was a streak on the gown which may have rubbed off from my forearm. These data are similar to those reported in the NEMJ. I find it difficult to extubate with both hands outside the perspex box, so I attempted extubation with one hand outside the containment and one hand inside the box. Unsurprisingly, this led to some contamination of the hand inside the box. These final images are of my head after a half second cough during unprotected laryngoscopy. This is a crude cough simulator and it tests droplets rather than aerosol. The results suggest that contained airway procedures may result in less droplet contamination than an open technique. During SARS in Hong Kong, there was continued transmission to healthcare workers despite the use of contact and airborne PPE. The safety hierarchy suggests that you'll have the best results if you avoid what you can, substitute less dangerous procedures for more dangerous ones, contain any procedures that you must perform, and use your PPE as a backup to your engineering controls rather than as primary protection.